Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verlus here, and this is how to use Minior. This Pokemon's crazy. Its ability, its stats, everything just kind of folds in and makes for a really fun Pokemon. So let's go and check out this Flying Rock typing. Now this is a reminiscent typing that anyone that's played the Aerodactyl will know how it feels. But you do have a lot of weaknesses, which kind of complicates things. And then as we go break down the stats and the way that Minior plays, it gets really fun because we have Shell Smash. So to a degree, if we're playing for Sweep, it kind of doesn't matter about these weaknesses. And then we also have some tankiness behind us. So overall, we're going to be weak to the rock, steel, water, electric, and ice. We have immunity to ground, so you just switch it into an earthquake or something. And if they have a choice item on a ground type move, well then, that's just super free for the Minior. And it's really going to love that. And then we have resistance to normal flying, poison, bug, and fire. So let's go and check out the offensive coverage. I think that's going to be a lot more important. So flying plus rock is going to give us super effective hits on bug, fighting, grass, fire, flying, and ice. And resisted though, steel type Pokemon are going to be a little bit of a problem for us. So the stats of Minior actually change throughout the battle because of the shields down ability. That when shields are up, it's going to look like this and be in its rocky form. And it has 100 in both defenses while rocking 60 in the hit points. But once the shields go down, it's going to get pretty crazy. 100 attack, 100 special attack, and 120 on the speed. 120 speed means we don't have to invest anything. So we max out hit points, max out the attack. And Shields Down also makes it to where we can't get status while setting up, so that would be very powerful indeed. And now let's go and check out the Minior. So yeah, we get all kinds of really fun stuff. We have like Confuse Ray, we have Self Destruct, we get Stealth Rock. I don't think I've seen anyone run the Stealth Rock on it because there's a lot of other Stealth Rock setters and stuff, but if you can really trap your opponent into a bad situation, you can like Stealth Rock into Shields Down setup and get some craziness. Also the Cosmic Power. Being this crazy meteor Pokemon from space, you get access to defensive boosting, which could kind of snowball into the late game, but again, that's where all those weaknesses comes in. So my my idea with this is just go Shell Smash and become one of those crazy sweeping Pokemon similar to a Cloyster or something like that. We can also tech in the explosion. We get that, so that's, that's something fun to run as well. We also get an interesting amount of special coverage. Like, we have the Power Gem, which technically works because we, we have a 100 on the special attack as well. But I would rather stick to physical because then we get more just out of that stone edge or the rock slide if we want to play for better accuracy and then the acrobatics. So white herb, shell smash, acrobatics, that's dumb. And that's what the Minior can do. Also, it is genderless. So because of that, there are going to be no egg moves for this Pokemon. So when you look right here, what you see is what you get. And we can see a bit more out of this right here. So yeah, just shields down, changes the Pokemon into its core form when hit points drop below 50%. Before then, cannot be affected by status conditions such as burn or paralysis. Now let's go and hop into Pokemon Showdown and check out the Minior. So like I said earlier, White Herb, Shell Smash. This is devastating. This is absolutely ridiculous what Minior can do once it goes for that Shell Smash. That's why I like comparing it to a Pokemon like the Cloyster, like all those other Shell Smashers. Actually, I just go and search out the Shell Smash. So yeah, Cloyster is a big one that you see a lot. Amistar, sometimes. But yeah, then after that, there's not too many. Barbarical is still a really strong Pokemon. Unfortunately, Turtonator doesn't seem to grab a lot out of it. And yeah, every once in a while you'll see Agoribus. So on the side of things, like Minior is looking to be a very proficient, if not the most powerful Shell Smash Pokemon, because it's going to have slightly more damage than that Cloyster on the raw attack stat, that's 95 attack compared to the 100. But also we have more speed and we can invest into our attack. With Cloyster, sometimes people will play for that little bit of extra safety and run that jolly nature, that way nothing will ever touch it. But also at the same time, you can get the adamant nature and still find a lot of damage. Gullink will boost something like the Icicle Spear to 125 base power, but White Herb into Acrobatics, well that's going to get close at a 110 base power with Stab for free. So more speed than Cloyster, rivals its damage, and then also has a different level of coverage because between the Acrobatics and Stone Edge, we also have the Earthquake. So now we actually do get to hit those Steel type Pokemon and then Stone Edge just covers against Flying and all kinds of other really fun stuff. Now the accuracy could be a problem and since we are boosting a lot and still Stab, the Rock Slide is definitely an option and then White Herb. I don't really see much reason to run much else because you're not using it for that defense re restoration, honestly. That you're just using it so your acrobatics gets the most damage possible. If you are a really kind of skittish type or you plan on leading with the Minior, Focus Sash is an option because if they just go straight up Tapu Koko, Electro type hit while you're trying to set up your Shell Smash, well, that's that's all that needs to be said about that. And then I was looking at some other things. The other options for the Minior, Explosion. 
that instead of running like one of these other coverage moves, uh, I would, I don't know, I feel like taking off Rock Slide or the Stone Edge would be a little more interesting for that explosion since Earthquake just has great coverage against a lot of things and finds those crazy super effective hits. The super effective against like a Toxapex or an Alolan Muck is just really good and useful and then if you get to something that you just can't straight up kill, use the explosion or if Minior is already low anyways and you're predicting its inevitable end, well then just let it go out like a supernova and then things are going to be pretty cool. Hopping over into some damage calculations for the Minior, we get to see the Acrobatics just doing absurd amounts of damage. That's Shell Smash, plus 2 attack, plus 2 speed, and as you can see, even at level 50, like, we don't need to worry about our speed at all. So level 50 is 140 uninvested on that 120 speed. That's doubling, which means that roughly, if we were using, like, level 100 terms, yeah. Yeah, it's over 550 speed at level 100 and that's also going to give us an insane amount at level 50 so really showing that yeah we can go full investment in our hit points and that's going to let us survive while we're in our shield form as long as our shields are up well now it's going to be really tough to knock us out of that and then with the white herb it's going to be even harder for them now this is where things do get a little awkward for the minior because if they plan their attacks correctly say they use like a pseudo weak ish hit and then combo it into a stronger super effective hit they can do like 40 percent then go for even more damage because until your shields break down well you are just going to be a 60 attack pokemon which is going to have a lot less sting in the end so that's why i'm just kind of going and throwing these numbers around and stuff so yeah say if our attack was at 60 Acrobatics not always finding a KO against something like the Mimikyu. I was trying to bring in this little bit of extra tanky Pokemon as well. 55 on the hit points. Well, that being maxed out will add into some tankiness. Let's go and use trusty old Weavile. Because Weavile will give us a lot of uh, interesting things right here. So while shields are up, so we gotta go and tweak the defense. So while shields are up, we're not going to be able to get KO'd by the Icicle Crash. And that's what we want. We want Weavile to just go Icicle Crash onto us and then we win because we drop our shields and now we get to outspeed it and do kind all kinds of really fun stuff to it but even then the acrobatics will still find that ko range at the plus two if we are in our shield form now say the weavile was going like knock off into icicle crash well that'd be the way of not procking your shields down and then reducing your damage but as we just saw even at the 60 attack still going to be enough so rocks a considerable amount of damage like plus two into a 110 stab based power really shows to be quite strong against quite a lot and then we can also go and see some other pokemon i wanted to see the tankiness of the minior in some other situations just shields up 100 on the defense and then we can go and compare so did mention the tapu coco but unfortunately yeah that tapu coco is just gonna be throwing down too much damage with that life orb with that thunderbolt with all that craziness right there uh bring out a pokemon like garchomp garchomp's gonna show us a little bit of damage on that dragon claw so this is where those ranges get interesting like that's what you're expecting you're expecting to take somewhere around 50% and hopefully over. That way you can boost, get your shields down, and then things are going to be cool. And then once the shields go down, Garchomp won't go down to the acro Acrobatics at 60. But then at 100 base attack, actually still won't go down. So showing that above average tanky Pokemon can still give us a bit of a threat. The explosion will be enough. So if you know that you're going to be dead anyways, might as well throw out the explosion. If Garchomp is already missing health or something, you know, just kind of showing these damage ranges and the kind of crazy things. Actually, never mind. Let's go with the Adamant Nature. Adamant Nature changes that. It defaulted us to Hasty for some reason, but if you have Adamant on the Acrobatics with the Minior, then that will be a KO, and that was Adamant on this one right here. So yeah, there we go, guys. Never mind. Uh, we're still going to be good to go against Pokemon like Garchomp for sure. Let's see the Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele is another one of those Pokemon that puts us in a very beneficial position because Psychic, even with like Psychic Terrain and all kinds of crazy damage boosting, won't be able to KO us unless it has like a Choice Specs. If it is running Choice Specs set, yeah, then we're kind of dead. So really pushing the limits of what Minior is capable of. But if we're already set up, then really the opponent has nothing to respond to us. Now against the Toxapex, things are also pretty interesting that the Liquidation doesn't pose an immediate threat to you. So what you do is you go for the Shell Smash, then you just throw out two Earthquakes, and you should be fine. But remember, once your White Herb goes away, you are going to start losing defenses. So that could cause a lot of problems, especially if you're at like the edge of that Shields Down ability. But it also shows why you can have a really good lead on the Minior, that if they're going for a lot of setup or if they're trying to play like a really awkward, cheesy kind of game, well, they can't status you because you're in your shield form, so they'll have to make a move at some point. And if they react a little too late or they don't have the proper response, then yeah, just keep going for those shell smashes. Now, you will have to be a weary. I feel like two shell smashes kind of limit, unless you're running the Focus Sash. If you're on the Focus Sash, that's going to be more dedicated lead on the Minior, and then that's when you want to go for like two Shell Smash, get one shot, and then just kind of survive and li live life on the edge while doing insane amounts of damage 
Also showing that the wider set can kind of just come in on any situation. Even like if stealth rocks are up, that could be kind of nice because it puts you at a lower range of health, but it means that you're better off just like going for your white herb, going for your shell smash, something hits you not hard enough, and then you survive, and now you're ready to go and clean house. So there we go guys, some of the intricacies of the Minior. It's kind of showing it off in a pretty respectful way. I, I've already gotten swept by this thing a couple times, because if you don't respect it and it just comes in, you die. Like that acrobatics damage is absolutely ridiculous. So it's a very opportunistic Pokemon, or it's also a very... Fairly easy to lead with Pokemon that can then snowball the battle as well. Depends on the opponent's team, and if they don't have the right team, then yeah, Minio is going to be able to clean it up better than most other Pokemon. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.